certain things. Mm -hmm. Our liability insurance that covers uh, ransomware. I don't know the limits, dollar amount right this minute, but okay. it's in our liability packet. All right, good. Thank you. And CLGW has also proposed to some, I think, mandatory monthly training for us as well to keep us um, up to speed on, you know, not falling victim to phishing exercises and right. things like that. I mean, that's included in theirs. Then Blue said they, that is uh, something that they are considering offering as an additional service, which I guess would be at an extra cost. And that's for every user, which would include y'all too. Yes, every know. user. And once a month, is that correct? I, that's what it says in the so. paperwork. Yeah. Do you know how long, how long that training is? Do you know? It varies depending on what training module is given out. What sometimes it's 10 minutes, sometimes it's 15, 20 minutes. Okay. And sometimes it's... <laughs> <laughs> Any more discussion? <laughs> <laughs> All right, it's that time. All the questions that's been asked have been asked, or uh, do we have a particular motion that we would like to approve? we got to approve one of the two. I make a motion we go with city like this one. I second we have a motion, we have a second to go with CLGW for our IT services for the amount of $29,748 a year. Um, who's second, Mark? Who's second? Okay. Okay, so uh, <coughs> discussion concerning this particular bid. No discussion? It's time for a vote. All in favor say aye. Aye. All opposed? Aye. Looks like we have one, two, two days. Is that correct? Who was the other day? I heard. Right beside you. Oh, okay. okay. All right, so that motion passes. All righty. We are finally done with new business here in the South. <laughs> but, so, uh, just I've got a few words I would like to say. I'll be quick about it. Uh, speaking of CLGW. Since April, May, I will say that they've been very, very helpful for our community, for Kenneth, more than more than most people would know. I have received phone calls for financial help when we needed it, or it looked like we may need it, uh, unsolicited. They have been willing and, and very good to us the past several months. I want to just compliment, compliment CLGW for what they've done in the past several months for our students. Um, Speaking of money, if we just voted on them this evening, uh, there's a $60,000 difference in price. The uh, ladies at City Hall, the department heads, they have been working hard to get our expenses down. As you all may or may not be aware, our expenses have been very expensive over the years, but we have really cut cost. Um, I think I added the other day was $27,000 we found in, in the last few weeks just in phone lines, savings per year. $27,000 per year savings. That adds up pretty quick. So um, so we're working on that. August 8th is election day for our city for capital improvements tax. Um, again, we're trying to watch your tax dollars. We just ask that we continue that tax to keep the services going as they are. Uh, Part-time fire. Last meeting we had a discussion on part-time fire. It has since been resolved and we were able to move money within the budget to cover the expenses uh, for at least a half a year. We're gonna revisit the subject in October with the Finance Committee and, the, and, and Chief Lance, actually Chief Davis, and see how those dollars are stretched. So our part-time firefighters are being, are, are being paid for their response. And then finally, uh, what, this is a great day for Kenneth. We had a, a factory opening today, Simtech, filters over there in the corner. <coughs> Uh, yes. 77 new jobs. You know, there it is. I think so. It's not every day we can say that. Mm -hmm. Hopefully, in a year from now, we can say that about a hospital. And then yes. the following year, we'll continue with another opening, I hope. We can only work for that going. So, I will end with that. Uh, at this time, anyone in the public wish to speak to the council? Yes. Oh, we got a bug guy back here. Okay, let me get the ladies first here, and we'll get to you here in a minute. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am, please do. 
Please state your name and address, please. All right, my name is Mary Jenkins, 203 Pool Street. All right. And the issue is landlord tenant rights when it comes to trash and maintaining the properties. Okay. Because I keep getting violation letters, but it's not <coughs> anything that I can take care of. If somebody puts a piece of furniture in their yard. Are you landlord or are you just yeah. the hood? I'm landlord. Okay. I can't go and take it because that is against the law. All right, I get a violation, I have to go to court. Why is that? Why can the city not find the tenant and make them responsible for the trash and the cleanup? That's currently being been put on pause. Yeah, and see, that, that's kind of where we're at here. All right, what is my rights? What is my obligations? You know, we, we don't know which way to go. Okay, if we are responsible for maintaining the yard, okay? I don't have a problem with that. But tell them to get out there and clean it up because I'm not riding my mower over their trash. Okay? So how are we going to make them clean that up? They need to be you know, responsible because if they're running that property, they're both there. All right. Then our a lot of our rights stop right there. Okay. And if I can't be in charge, then I should not be responsible. They should be accountable for it. Make the trash, you should clean your own mess up. Right. So what are we gonna do? I mean, what is my obligation? What is my right? The tenants are being charged. They're, they also receive citations. You see, that's not what I was told. I was informed that the landlord is responsible for mowing the yard and maintaining the yard. Who okay. told you that? Um, no way from the city. Yeah. But, the, but we. It's in the new code, but we've not been allowed to use that yet. Yeah. So. But we, well, I mean, we've we been we charged. We give the tenant citations. Yes. Yes, we do. Okay. Yes, we do. Okay. Both. both. Yeah. We give both, both. citations. Okay. Yes. okay. But what the question is? What is my rights? What is my responsibility? Okay. Why am I going to have to go to court when it's about something that I have no control over? And they say, oh, well, can, you know, evict them. Well, you can't just evict somebody because they throw a couch out in the yard. All right? Because it takes three months to get somebody out of a house, and then you're going to trash the place, and you're going to clean it up anyway over a couch. So the question is, why am I going to court over a couch that I cannot move? I cannot do anything with it. What am I supposed to do? You do have control over your tenants, and our code provides that both parties can be charged. Right, but in Missouri law, it states that you could not remove their property without permission. <coughs> okay, so if they tell me no, leave it there, what am I going to do? Again. The property maintenance code provides that both the landlord and the tenant are responsible for the <coughs> citation issue. It is issued to both. Okay. So that still leaves me hanging. What? All right. Know. What about the yard mower? Who is responsible for mowing the yard? You are, unless you put it in your lease. That they okay. Mow it. So if it's in my lease, then I'm not responsible. If you get roped to court with it, you can show the judge your lease, I guess. No. Okay. I, I don't I don't know that that I don't know that, that really that gives her that would give the, the landlord uh, uh, a route to go after the, the tenant, but I think the landlord and the tenant are equally responsible for the yard. Yes. E either way, you're both getting the the ticket of the yard shop. Okay, because I was informed that, that no, the tenant is not responsible for mowing their own yard anymore. That if it's not kept up, you know, kept up the code, that I was the one as a landowner that was getting cited for that. And what were you told by the invited from the city? Um, what's the new guy? Is it there? <laughs> Brian? Yeah, it was you. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> On the tenure contract, the way I understand it, on the tenure contract, right? <laughs> Well, well, it plainly states it in my rental agreements that they are responsible and that if I get a code violation, 
I automatically start maintaining the yard, but it would cost them fifty dollars every time I do that. Well, okay. Okay. But then I was told that no, you can't do that either. So it's like you can do that. You can do that. Right. Yeah, you absolutely can't do that. Okay, so Jeez. if I all right, so I went to court this month over that stupid couch right here. It's crack it's good enough. All right. Do I have the right to go up in their yard if they refuse to deal with it? Can I go up in the yard and throw it away? Well, see, that's what I'm saying. I'm, I mean, no, you're at the hire your own attorney. Get okay, well, I, mean, I have a good attorney, but I'm just trying to get an, an idea of what the code is, what the code says. Well, the code Who's says, responsible? The code says that the landlord and the tenant are responsible. Okay, so if I'm going to court and so is somebody else, right? Yes. Good. Because I'm not going to be responsible for somebody else's trash. I provide trash cans for every one of my rentals. And Victor will tell you, I just give him a list. Go write these people up because I want the yards cleaned up. I don't like trashy yards. But I need to know that they're going to be held accountable for it too. They are. <coughs> we write them. We write citations to the land. If we write it to the landlord, we write it to the tenant. Okay. So the way that it states now, supposedly, if you get two violations within the same year on the same tenant, you don't get a warning. You automatically go to court. Is that correct? Yes. Okay. Then that's the landlord and the tenant. Yes. Okay. Because I haven't seen any of my tenants go to court over this. Uh, they've been getting, they've been getting cited. Okay. They get tickets, and they get summons to go to court. Okay. Now whether or not they show up in court, we don't know. If they don't show up in court, then they get to show cause and they go. Okay. To show because cause. I was under the impression that it all falls back on the landlord, and I just didn't no. think that's quite fair. No. Okay. If, if, if a property is cited, the landlord and the tenant are cited. Thank you. Thank you. One brief summary report. Would you please uh, introduce yourself to the council? Sir? Would you please introduce yourself? Oh, yeah. This is a mosquito, yeah. Anyway, for those of you that did, do not know me, I'm Tim Nelson with Becker Disease Control and Mosquito Control. Uh, I see some new faces. And uh, so I'll make it brief. I'll give you a little bit of education on what we do to you that don't know us or what we do. So with the mosquito control, of course, we're battling them right now. We've got the perfect scenario that produces them on regular. We'd be better off to get a couple day rain, you know, than just periodic little thunderstorms go through so they could constantly breathe. We are larvicide every day. Uh, I guess some of you probably see us out and about. We larva siding every day. Liquid larva siding. We put briquettes. We check catch basins. If you're looking at in this, I will email once I, I'll be getting all your email addresses with your permission and email this report to you. The only reason I have just this piece of one tonight is because Sabrina, that she's doing these reports and she's bombarded with so many that she's overloaded. So it'll be a few days and you get to report. It'll show you everything that we're doing from the larva side to the adult side and where you're winging, all that. So anyway, so we start out with the larva side and the first thing we end with the adult side. Of course, it's inevitable with the Anopheles type mosquito, which is our predominant mosquito, that we have to spray pretty much every night. We try to uh, change the chemicals up as we go. We're doing that now uh, with some Xenovex and permethrin. Uh, to keep from getting resistance and things of that nature, okay? Uh, we did bring in the airplane for the fourth, to try to help matters for the fourth. Uh, we do use some other chemicals. We try to get, we use <coughs> chemicals that are safe to the environment and the people, okay? So if you look up anything about permethrin and stuff like that, uh, those chemicals they use in head lice, shampoos, a lot of other uh, things, okay? So we're not gonna, put out a bunch of organophosphates over the citizens, citizens of uh, Kent, things like that. We'll make sure we've got where to help the people of Kent. Um, our trucks have GPS units in them. 
that will um, tell you from what time you was at an address, 712 Cedar Street, how long you sprayed, how much chemical you put out, and so on. Um, we can always go back and look at that if there's some a constituent calls, got a complaint about the truck or whatever it might be, or just need to know, say they're not getting that street, we can look it up and make sure we address it and get that fixed. The chemical droplet size is set to a certain droplet size so that it will carry, you know, 300 feet effectively and attach to the mosquito and kill it. That is how that works. So if you just put out chemicals, just throw them out there. If you took a hand sprayer and throw it out there, that's not going to work right. You have to have the <coughs> droplet size is the right size to drift effectively for 300 feet and attach to the mosquito and kill it. Uh, I can go on for hours on educating and you're more than welcome to call and ask us anything about it. Um, we are battling them right now. They're pretty abundant. But if you go outside the city, you will also realize that they are more abundant. So we are reducing them. We can't get rid of them. I mean, they've done tests at colleges and stuff where they put nets over a ditch and for numerous years, the mosquitoes hatch out of that ditch when you put water to it. Okay? The eggs lay dormant for many, many years. Um, so there is, they're here to stay. And you have different species, you know, the monthly, the wind, product, you know, brings them in. If you get some high winds, it'll bring them in. You know, our predominant winds out of the southwest, they'll bring them in from the rice fields or whatever it might be. Um, so we're, we're constantly looking at that. We also do disease monitoring. So we, we run traps and we, we collect these mosquitoes and we'll run them through a ramp machine and we'll check them for West Nile and things to make sure we don't have a problem to get, so some people are getting, you know, end up getting sick. Uh, one little bit of news, just to not try to worry you too much, but we had the first case of malaria, active case of malaria in the United States in many, many years this year in Texas. Um, Hopefully that's the only one because the mosquito that carries that, I can't remember the town in Texas, but it's in Texas. You can Google it, you'll be able to find it. Sorry? It's down around Brown. Yes, okay. Um, Anopheles quadrimaculatus, which is our predominant species, is the one that carries it. So hopefully that don't, you know, boost up. That, that could be pretty serious. Um, is there any questions? Because I love the questions. Yes, it's the female that's the only one that bites you. No, that's true. Ugly is true. The male feet on the nectar. So is this helping people's homes that water every day? I'm sorry. Can, is it helping people's homes that water every day? <laughs> Do they breathe from the people's homes? No. People who water every day, is it going to kill mosquitoes on their property? You mean you're spraying? Mm -hmm. when, when you spray, people that water, water their yards spray every day, yard. and you come back and spray the, the water, when they water their grass. The residual, you're, you're saying, are, we, are they washing away the residual? Correct. But now with the permethrin products, it, it's a contact killer, okay? okay? So if we're using a suspend or a, a, a barrier spray or something, yes, that could be possible somewhat. Uh, but this is a contact killer, and it's usually, you know, 45 minutes, okay. and, and the residual's gone, okay? Uh, there is some things out there that um, you could put out as barrier sprays and other products and stuff that uh, I've not been impressed with on working anyway, so I don't use them too much, um, but no. Uh, the well, thing is, what we need to watch them. for, there's numerous things people need to watch for, is like people don't realize their gutters produce mosquitoes, uh, anything, bird baths, anything of that nature around your homes, de uh, uh, vehicle ruts, um, things like that produce hat bottle tops. You'd be surprised how many mosquitoes larvae and produce mosquitoes out of a, just a cat. Um, also, uh, grown up areas, places where they can harbor underneath homes for whatever reason. <coughs> Adults love to get in foliage and things like that. So, you know, grooming your area uh, around your homes and stuff. Uh, they're going to go to the ground, <coughs> up on the porch and so on and try to get in the house, uh, things like that. Uh, there's numerous things. And I've, I've put this in the paper. I've done Lions Clubs. I've done, you name it, educating folks. And it's a never ending deal. Uh, people just don't realize that these mosquitoes, they come from everywhere. Uh, you don't realize, you know, it's, they'll be in culverts. 
they get on. That's why we're treating catch basins regular, things like that. And you really want to watch out for sewage water, things like that, that can become real stagnant. That produces those disease types. These kids can even get triple E and stuff going. It can be serious. I mean, it's happened in in state, other states, not ours. Thank goodness. It can get serious. So we are doing more than just spraying with that truck. Everybody thinks about mosquito control is just that spray truck. That's part of it. That's adult siding. It's the last thing you do. It's inevitable because we're in a delta. So, anyway, any more questions? Do we have a contract with you? Yes, sir. Yeah. How many years? Uh, it's five years. I lost years. track. It's five years. Yeah. I think you know, if I'm not mistaken, it ends at the end of 24. Okay. Yeah. <coughs> and of course, I hope I get to stay here. How many flyovers will be done this year? Sorry? How many flyovers will you are you planning well, to do the rest of your summer? I, it's time to try to get the airplane back in. They just crashed it on me the other day. So I'm working on that. Uh, we usually do four to five flyovers. Um, and then um, in the past we were doing some flyovers and we had a little extra money left and we'd do some more. And uh, it's working pretty nice, but they've had they keep crashing our darn airplanes. So it's presenting a problem. It's a problem. All right, sir. Well, appreciate the report. Well, thanks for having me. Thank you. Thank you. Anything else for public comments? Yes. Oh, I'm sorry. Mayor Council, uh, on behalf of the Fire Fire Association, we would like to invite everybody out Thursday. This Thursday is when? 7 to 9 p.m. We still got some more IT barn uh, for Captain Bill Monroe's retirement celebration. So I just want to go out and get my come, please. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. still talking trash uh, here in Kennett and um, I haven't made comments uh, over the last few city council meetings even though I've attended because I know the priority has been budget and focusing on other things but my only ask tonight is that we could possibly reconvene the subcommittee and did that carry over from you know last year I know Townie yes. Sparks had that so I was just hoping that we could reconvene that and kind of maybe level set and come up with some ideas and suggestions on maintenance and some other things. So. Well, uh, the okay. belt's still here and now he's up there, so up to the Okay. Arrange day. All right. And then I, I'd like to invite you, we planted wallflowers uh, around the block of Baldwin, Varner, uh, Vandevenor, and Liberty. So um, you, can, you can ride by and look at the wallflowers. Our hope was to attract some butterflies and pollinators like bees and hummingbirds this year. We've seen about seven different types of butterflies, so I'm really excited. And we've seen <coughs> lots more dragonflies, which I believe eat mosquitoes. Yeah. So, um, so anyway, we're hoping to drive by and look at the wildflowers. <laughs> thank you. Thank you very much. And they are I drive by every couple of days just thank to watch you. their progress. Yes, ma'am. Positive. Yes, Melissa, I know, I hate, I know. Melissa Combs just texted me and said that the uh, Simtech event should be on the 10 o'clock news on Channel 8. Good. Hopefully we'll be home by then. We're going to be home by then. <laughs> 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 sitting down. Sitting down. She was on the 6 o'clock then. Or 5 o'clock then. Okay. I will say, I'll say Melissa Combs. Oh, I'm saying. Yes. Ladies here. Ladies here. Just so everybody know. Um, Brenda and Jan. Uh, they worked uh, Monday and Friday, I believe. Uh, they had a dinner. There was a dinner for the family of the Ayers family who own Simtech at uh, the club. They had a dinner last night. And then today, um, two ladies and then Melissa prepared pretty much. I mean, Danny was uh, out there too. Melissa was outstanding. But yes, y'all did a good job. And Melissa did a great job throughout the whole two year process. We even pitched watermelons. We happen. And the street department. We appreciate the street department yes. lending a hand. On set up and tear down. So, thank you all very, very much. It was a big turnout, I thought. Very big. Uh -huh. yes. Yes. A lot of it. She said Channel 12 showed up after everyone left. Yeah. <laughs> yes, it is. Channel 8 was there. Yes. Yes, sir. Talked to y'all before about the uh, planting native grasses and wildflowers for the 
right away. Got with Ms. Ellis and her husband. And states come Thursday or Thursday? Uh, next Friday. Next Friday. <coughs> so I'm gonna be meeting with them. Uh, try and get an idea of something going. Uh, I mentioned before about the community service. Still waiting on Judge Spill on calling back about that, or I might probably carry about it to get community service workers to do what we used to do a long time ago. Pick up trash, mow, wash cars, do things that they should be paying the price for. I mean, break the law and can't be paid. You can wash cars and scrub toilets for the time. So they can save some money. Uh, one other thing was the, I brought up uh, the city having its own gas supply. Okay, what well, I done was I got hold of Hux, and they have what's called a Hux business card in which they charge interest to get gas, you get 10 cents off a gallon. The problem is that has to be paid every single day before the closing uh, Casey's Casey's couldn't get more information. You can call, all you get is their ad or pizza points. So whatever it is. Talk to MFA. MFA is what said that they would put tanks in, put pumps in, and kind of get an idea of what we use daily whether they make the shipment once a week or twice a week. Uh, the price would be as much as 15, 15 cents off, no federal tax. Um, still waiting, I need to get some figures from, <coughs> see a lot more, I got their, the amount of gas they use for the year, things like 18,000 in gas, another 7,000 in diesel. But I need to get it for all the other city departments and then sit down with them because they're more than happy to do it. I mean, they're jumping up for joy to come here about it. But um, there's no way of just saving us money if we get gas at a set price, even though it's been fluctuating quite a bit, um, to have a reliable gas source we can use day and night without purchase orders. You know, something else going on there. But anyways, MFA is open to it, so I just got to get to the number of the we spoke to their home office, and uh, they have a couple different options <coughs> as level billing right. or ceiling billing. Right. Um, yeah, the, the, the other option was using their pump on Y Highway, which I, to me is out of the question because it's already, you know, that gas right there is high enough as it is. But what he would do, I'm trying to find out what he would do for the city as a deal to get city business and save us money in, in, in the long run, you know, because it does even have quite a bit of budget. I mean, last year was, well, 10 days before the end of the budget, we'd already spent 104000 in fuel, and that's a pretty good change. But anyways, like, but like I said, once I get all that figured out, and then go <coughs> say you know, just anything to say to city money. So, that's all right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Anything else from the public? I'm sorry. Oh, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> it's just something that I, I forgot to mention and I've not heard mentioned, but I don't want anybody to forget we've got a hearing Thursday night yes. with billionaire funding group here in this room at 630. And that's basically just to board up the property yep. to, to make it safe. Yeah. What may be here? I've not heard wrong. That's what I thought. I think they walked away. Six or eight. <laughs> Anything else before Victor stands back up? Or Jan? Oh. <laughs> I just asked Lance you had a stun gun. Alright. Well, um, again, I appreciate the attendance this evening. Uh, it was a long meeting, but we had a lot to go over. But um, we we are needing to go into a closed session to discuss a grievance issue. Uh, both of you, we do need you all to stick around, please. I'd like to have about a five. A 10 minute break while well, everybody kind of stretch and do what they need to do. Uh, but we do need to have a vote to go into closed session. Second. Uh, motion second. We need a, a roll call vote. And a yes. 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 Thank you very much. We're going to jump for the evening. Thank you all again.